Uh, so let, let me get started. So first of all, thank you for thank you to the host of One Million Cubs uh, for hosting me and I would say us uh, as Wise Computing Academy. Um, at Wise, we inspire young learners to be leaders of tomorrow. And really, let me start off with saying the future is coming. The question is, will us and our children be ready? STEM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Related jobs grew at three times the rate of non-STEM jobs in the last decade. And about 2.5 million jobs in the STEM field go unfilled yearly because of there is so much demand, but so uh, less of um, supply of really educated and um, you know folks with the with the, with the right uh, skill set, and all this is happening while minorities and women are deeply underrepresented in this field. And on top of this, the salaries in the STEM field are anywhere from fifty to hundred percent more than the average salary in the U.S. So as you can see, um, you know, we're standing here uh, where, you know, in the pandemic times where, um, you know, many, many businesses have closed down, many people have lost their jobs, but still, if you go to any job portal like indeed.com or any other portal, you'll see, you know, droves of STEM related jobs out there. And when you talk to the CEOs and uh, people who are hiring, they will tell you that they cannot find enough skilled people to fill positions in their company. So my name is Vishal Basin. I am co-founder of Wise Computing Academy, father of three, I have two girls and a boy. And our goal at Wise <clears throat> is to educate and prepare children to reach their full potential and achieve great things, bigger than anything we've ever imagined. Um, I'm sure, uh, you, you know, some of you may have the kids of your own, some of you may have nieces and nephews, and uh, they can all tell you how bad you are at using your mobile devices, and they can give you a, a lesson or two on, on how, to, how to use them. Uh, however, if you ask them, you know, if they've ever actually created the apps, the games, the video, uh, you know, curation things, whatever they're using, have they ever created this? I'm very certain that in 99% of cases, the answer would be no, because what we are building is, you know, users, some really excellent users of technology, and we're very handful number of people who actually know how to create them. So our mission at Wise Computing Academy is to enable the young generation to become creators and not just the users of technology. And our approach is project and student project based and student oriented approach to teaching computer programming, uh, robotics and design to young learners. We start at the age of pre K uh, four and we go all the way to high school and we do our teaching online and also at host location by host locations. I mean um, schools, preschools. Uh, community centers, even churches, temples, you know, um, anywhere where there is good facility and good infrastructure available, and where we already have learners or students there, our model is to go and reach out to them uh, where they already are. And we have built curriculum uh, from the ground up, uh, and these are all age and skill appropriate, so for smaller kids, curriculum obviously looks entirely different. And then as they start at the introductory level, they go to beginner, intermediate, advanced, and so on and so forth. So we are a, a huge believer in learning by doing. Uh, Josh, I know he was talking about some presentation skills uh, early on, and his, his point is very valid that, you know, you can uh, show people uh, things and give them documentation and whatnot. But really where, you know, where you can really make a difference is, is allow them to, to learn by doing, create a platform where they get to do stuff, stumble and figure out things uh, with, 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 our, with our help and support. 
So the benefits of going through our programs to the students, uh, you know, since we focus on overall development of a child and cognitive and increasing their cognitive ability, uh, you know, they get better at problem solving, logical thinking and critical reasoning. And since they work as a team, um, you know, it teaches them patience, it te teaches them teamwork. And also we are, you know, we focus a lot on presentation and showcases, you know, we call them mini TED Talks. So it also helps them with building really good confidence, self-esteem and excellent presentation skills. Uh, we are also a franchisor, we're a relatively new franchisor and we are seeking franchisees in, uh, you know, across the US and Canada. And, you know, we prior to pandemic were a uh, majority lion's share of our classes were in person. Uh, we had some online presence, but during pandemic, we, we went 100% online. So you can see how flexible our business model is. So, you know, it, we offer a recession and pandemic proof business model. Uh, since we don't have a location and we use host location and online, uh, we offer a very low initial and ongoing cost business opportunity, um, you know, rapid growth. It's home-based. Our territories for our franchises are, are huge. And of course, since you are uh, working from home and also, you know, you get to decide when you want to have your sessions or have your instructor have the sessions. So it offers you a flexible schedule. And above Michelle, all, you're down to one minute. And above, thank you. Above all, it allows you to make a difference in, in your community. So market validation, we started off uh, in 2018 uh, franchising. And uh, you know, since then we have, we have 10 locations that are franchise location and two corporate. And we are looking to expand as franchise and also online um, as we move forward. So uh, just a sort of quick recap, you know, we've, uh, we teach students online. We also take them to various coding and robotics competitions. We partner with various nonprofit organizations like Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, universities, libraries. So really the idea is to reach out to as many students as we can around the world, because we think what we have to offer is missing at schools and it's really required uh, for uh, required skill set for everybody in the world. With that, I know I'm um, a little short on time. So I'm gonna stop here at challenges. Um, you know, since this is, um, this platform, you know, uh, allows us to talk to entrepreneurs like, like yourself, I'd like to close with some of the challenges that we have. Uh, the first one is obviously scaling the business like as you would imagine uh, you know, any small business would have, finding right partners and franchise owners, brand recognition, and just general awareness about the STEM field. Uh, with that, I'll open it up to, to questions. Nice job, very nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, let's start with Eric. How did you decide to start Wise Academy? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So we started Wise Academy about six years ago. And, uh, you know, my elder one, she was about six, six and a half, or I think five about that time. And we were, we really, you know, we, I come from a tech background. My wife and I, we both co-founders. We both come from a technology background. And we really, you know, believe in learning by doing. And we were looking for, um, you know, areas where we could, you know, where we can expose her to really be, start creating our own uh, things, be creative. We understand that, you know, technology is the medium um, for the current times. It offers you multi-dimensional way to express yourself, to, to be creative. And really, honestly, we didn't really see a whole lot of opportunities out there for a child like this. And we felt that, you know, we always wanted to be a, a sort of own our own business. And we felt that there may be certain opportunity here. So we started off with um, just inviting some of our, uh, some of the kids of, of, of our friends uh, in our media room. That's where we started. We started uh, taking classes in our media room and sort of grew from there and then started to reach out to schools and the school, schools expressed good interest and then sort of one thing led to another. Very cool. 
Those are, those are the best stories. I love those. Uh, uh, Eric's uh, other question, do you do more with homeschool students and are you able to get into public schools? Right, so we, um, we are actually in quite a few public school districts in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And some of our franchises are also in public schools as well. Uh, we go to public, private, charter, preschools, all types of schools. And for home schools, we do, you know, we've tried quite a bit to actually uh, reach out to the homeschool community. And we do have a few handful of homeschoolers um, who do our online classes. Uh, but I think that is a, that is a, there's a huge potential there and for whatever reason, we've not been able to get, um, you know, increase the number of students on the homeschool side, uh, which we would certainly love to do. You know, we have a few of them. Um, on, the, on public schools, yes, we do, um, we do open to public schools. Uh, uh, prior to the pandemic, we used to go there in person. And today uh, we do all our classes online. And actually uh, a public school in, in Michigan reached out to us um, you know, in early spring and said, hey, our students are going to be done. Um, can they take classes with you? And we said, yes. So we ha even have schools from Michigan um, who are participating in our online program now. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Denny's question, what do you think is the problem with our country and students not being interested in STEM? Why is that the case in your opinion? Yeah, no, this is a, this is a great question. So. I just feel that um, people have not been exposed to the possibility to, to all the, I mean, of course, there's a lot of people who are in the STEM field, but I think that that's less than 10% of the general population. And it, I think it's a lack of exposure, maybe lack of interest in the science and technology field. Uh, you know, maybe it's, um, uh, it's just, uh, you know, ignorance in some cases and also in some cases people are more interested in, 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 in other areas than uh, being, a, being an engineer or being a scientist. So I think the, it's, it's on, on us, um, entrepreneurs, educators, to really sort of go out there and tell them, you know, show them all the cool things they can do in this field because, you know, we've seen uh, where we've taken classes when we started off, uh, people would say, "Hey, I'll send my I'll send my, my, my boy to your class." And I'm like, "Why wouldn't you send your girl to your class?" And he's like, "Well, you know, robotics is really for the boys." And we said, "No, it's not." And and you know what we did was we created some programs that were specifically targeted towards girls, so we can show them how you can do fashion design, for example, using you know 3D modeling. Uh, using coding, using designing. So really, I think it's, um, I, I just feel like it's a, you know, it's, it's a mix of multiple things that are going on, uh, which uh, I'm, I'm hoping that as the time progresses, uh, people become more aware and are more sort of open to, to, to sending their kids into, into this field. Yeah, that's an excellent, excellent point. And there's some organizations I know about I can send you that are helping women uh, get into STEM. And it's, it's really cool stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Tony wants to know, what are your rates? Uh, and I, I don't know if he means that in terms of like maybe the franchisees, uh, like what is the cost to be a franchisee as well? He, he asked that question. So just can you talk in general about your rates and then the cost for a franchise? Certainly, certainly. So I'll start off with our rates. So we typically do classes uh, throughout the school year, we follow the school schedule, and our classes are anywhere from eighty-five to hundred dollar per month. And these are forty-five minutes to an hour session per week, and we follow school schedule. So if it's four weeks in a in a in a month, then we'll take four classes. If it's five, then we'll take five. And <clears throat> because it's the reason it's a range is because you know we have locations, um, you know, in Pennsylvania, for example, the standard of living is a little bit higher. And in Dallas, Fort Worth, our classes run at about eighty-five to eighty-nine dollars per month. We also offer camps in summer, spring, and winter break. And our camps are, you know, we offer half-day and full-day options, and they run anywhere from one hundred and sixty-five dollars to, I'd say, about three fifty dollars uh, for half-day versus full-day camps. So these 
prices, as you can tell, are extremely reasonable and very similar to the prices you would pay if you send your child to learn tennis or swimming or anything else. Uh, so that's on the, uh, on the cost to the consumer, to our parents. Uh, on franchising, <clears throat> our initial franchise fee is 29,500, so 29,500. And that's really it. Um, you know, there is uh, some additional cost in just setting up your business, some legal fees and uh, insurance requirements, things like that, which is, uh, you know, maybe three, four, five thousand um, dollars But that's really it. Um, you know, after that, uh, the royalty is 8%, which is on your gross revenue per month. Uh, and there is no other hidden fee. There is no other hidden cost that, 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 that we apply. I hope that answers the okay. question. Yeah, and along the same line, so we'll, we'll keep the franchise theme going here. Uh, what, what do you, uh, what do franchise owners do? Do they do the actual facilitation in the classes? And if so, what resources do you provide to franchisees? Certainly. So we have both the models. So we, we have many franchisees who, who love to teach and they became, they become teachers themselves. But we also have franchise, of course, as you scale, you know, it cannot be a one person thing. So as you scale, you hire instructors uh, on a part-time basis uh, or full-time basis based on your needs. Uh, so franchisees, uh, franchise owners can teach themselves or can be a business owner. So there are two main things that we, that we want our franchise owners to be sort of uh, successful at and have focus on. The first one is business development. And business development is to bring business in be part of your community, go reach out there, and you become the face of Wise Computing Academy in your local hometown. <clears throat> and that's really, you know, you coordinate with schools, preschools, with parents directly. So it's B2B and B2C both. Uh, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is ensure quality of the classes that we are, that we are running. Uh, either you're doing it yourself or someone else is doing it for you. Just make sure that you know, they keep up the highest level of quality that, that we expect from them. So we have different tools and techniques and things that we, that we sort of implement. So they just want to make sure, I want to make sure that they manage that. And also, um, you know, the second aspect of quality is transparency with parents. You know, we think one of our differentiators are how we are interacting with parents on a regular basis and parents and schools as well and showing them what their child is learning with us, right? I'm sure some of you have middle school or high schoolers and whenever they come back from any classes, you ask them, how was it? They'll be like, it was good. Well, can you tell me something more? Uh, not, not really, maybe, maybe later, right? Um, so what we wanted to do was, uh, we wanted to make sure that we tell the parents directly. So we use a mobile apps, uh, you know, technology to really keep the parents, the general, the, the main stakeholders aware of what we are teaching as well. So those are the two main aspects that we want our franchise owners to focus on. You also asked Josh, how do we support them? We offer them training on sales, marketing, operation, um, you know, as they, as they come on, um, they become part of our wise franchise extended family. So and if you think about it, the whole point of franchising is you want to be the, in the business for yourself, not by yourself. So, you know, you get this framework and the support system, not just from us, but also from other franchises, right? Um, where, you know, if you have a question, you can get answered. If you want a marketing material, it's already there. So it gives you a very good sort of support mechanism to get going and also be successful on an ongoing basis. So, and also our curriculum is automatically available to them. Um, we make additions to curriculum all the time. We view ourselves as technology company in education business. So as you know, technology is rapidly changing. So uh, to keep up with that, our curriculum is rapidly changing. We are adopting new techniques, new things with the eventual goal of ensuring that our students have fun, right? If they have fun in our sessions, they will learn. And we want technology to be an enabler, uh, to be able to create that connection between the instructor and the student. So, you know, our curriculum is also available to them. So anything that you would imagine uh, a, a new franchise owner would need to get going, we provide them that support. 
Great, great. And uh, Eric's question is, do you have any success stories of students who graduated and is now successfully working in their field? Great. So, uh, you know, we actually focus, uh, majority of our students are, are smaller. So, you know, it's not like students who are in college and, and have gone on to, to, to taking jobs. Uh, you know, we focus on smaller age group because we, we strongly feel that these are the formative years. Um, and this is the time to actually, uh, you know, uh, expose them to the skills that, that, that we are, uh, you know, allowing them to, to grow. Um, the all success stories, I'd say many, many parents have given us feedback that, you know, the child has become generally uh, has, uh, you know, acquired better interpersonal skills, have become a better orator, uh, can present with confidence. And, you know, sometimes they say, well, you know, my, my child really never spoke that much, but now I see him. You know, because we, we invite parents for their presentation. So they see their child stand up in front of the classroom and talk about the project he or she built, how they built it, why they built it. And, uh, you know, those skills are skills that are required no matter what you do. You know, you could be a doctor, you could be an attorney, you could be whatever. You need to be able to convince other people to be able to present your thoughts in a, in a clear fashion to anybody, right? So um, when, when parents see that, and when parents see how their child is, you know, excelling in this, in this huge competitions like the first Lego league, it's a, it's a worldwide competition where over, I think this year, 365,000 people participated, which is just amazing. And, uh, you know, we won several awards there and they focus on overall development of a child just like we do as well. So. You know, we have many, many stories where parents feel that uh, the child has grown, not just on a tech front, but also on human skills. Nice, nice. I, I see, I personally see a lot of opportunity here for branding. Um, and it, it's, a, it's way too much to get into, obviously, but I'll give you a quick 10 second idea or something that to start with. Uh, consider that when you know what do you do like what you do is not stem education that's not actually what you do it's it's kind of if you get that out of your mind for a second and imagine what you do is maybe um you create creators or for for the women stem for the girl stem you maybe you put the flower on the stem right you can play with that but maybe you you're, you're opening minds so always talk about the effects of what you do and start maybe thinking about that thinking about the change you're, you're creating in the world as what you do, and then STEM education as how you do it. Absolutely, Josh, that's, that's, that's very good feedback. Um, and yeah, I 100% agree with you that uh, branding and positioning are super important. Sometimes we get lost with what we do as opposed to what impact we have, right? No, yeah. but no, great feedback. I think uh, we'll certainly take those and sort of use those to, to, to make our uh, position and, you know, better and also just sort of uh, reach out to parents with the impact as opposed to, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the, the, the nitty gritty of what we do. Yeah, because otherwise you get lost in the noise because everyone says, I'm in education, we're doing this kind of education and it just becomes this white noise of right. there's too much, too many choices out there, but then you stand out because you're talking about why you're doing this business and the effects you're having on kids. Uh, and it makes you unique. It's that, that different voice. So my two cents on that. If, uh, if I may make a suggestion as well, um, you know, I'm in game development, which is one of the fastest growing industries in the world right now. Um, you know, it grew 20% last year and, and so forth. The, um, um, I'm, I support a lot of STEAM programs. And so they add the A for arts. That's right. right in the STEM. And that historically sees a, a, a greater, a, a more significant num, uh, amount of involvement of uh, women and girls uh, in those programs than, than STEM programs. Uh, it's, it's an optics thing, right? Um, so I don't know if that's something you might want to pivot in or, or whatever to help bring in more girls. Um, the uh, and attract you know their their parents or their mothers and, and and so forth as far as you know pushing them to to get involved in the program or such um but you know 
I know the, the, the video game industry and, this, and the modeling and simulation industry both um, are very heavy in the arts, very heavy. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, Rupert, I, I agree with you and we embrace the steam, um, you know, full heartedly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we also teach design. We actually teach uh, game development with Roblox uh, and mm -hmm. we also teach 3D modeling, designing, printing, uh, you know, uh, augmented and virtual reality coding, things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And you, you're right. I mean, anything that we can do to attract a hundred percent of students, as opposed to just a partial number, is what we are. We are, you know, what we always try to do. And you're right. Uh, I think focusing on on art aspect certainly uh, makes it a lot more um, inclusive. And also, you know, when we're building robots, you know, we're building robots from cardboards and things like that. So there's a lot of building and creativity that comes with it that I think attracts more people as opposed to just working with machineries, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Vishal, uh, I'm gonna send it over to Eric for our last question, because we're kind of running out of time here. <laughs> sure. All right. Thank you, Vishal, and uh, great job. Uh, our final question is what can we as a community do for you? Certainly, Eric. Um, I think the, um, the question that the panel last year, a great question, the feedback is great. Uh, mm -hmm. We, as I said, uh, scaling, finding right uh, franchise owners is one of the key things that we, that we are looking for. So if you, if you do know somebody that, that can be part of this would be, you know, would be very helpful. Um, if you think there are certain things that we can do from brand recognition perspective, if there are schools in your area that can benefit from our program, you know, we, we are open to online. We teach kids from all over the world. So, you know, all those things would certainly help. And I'll just end up with saying, we're trying to grow both online and as a franchise owner. And there are, the possibilities are immense and we just need to make sure that we get the right kind of people to partner with us. So if we can help with that, that would be great. All right, great. Okay.